we uh we have quite the a little bit of event here for you for this super week. Uh, coming up next on today's installment of the Random Mania Super Week, we are happy to present you with the Super Mario Brothers 3 Randomizer uh, Mini Tournament. Um, I'm Teeks88, and joining me in the commentary booth is, uh, is the one this... and o- Sorry? me. The one and only Starman. Welcome. Well, Starman Random. Yep. Uh, so, uh, we had quite the adventure uh, getting placements for this uh, tournament, didn't we? Oh, yeah, we certainly did. And just over the past couple of months, uh, as a matter of fact, because um, as some may recall, just last March, we had um, several spectacular races between 44 players who took place in the uh, in the randomized tournament that occurred last spring in the, for speed gaming. Uh, many of them are back with us today, along with uh, several new runners uh, who just joined the randomized community recently. And we're very happy to have them, of course. So the way this tournament is formatted is we'll have a 16 person bracket, single elimination, Tournament will be using the same flag set, uh, that of course being the 20 group flags too, in which uh, levels, enemies, power ups, and wor- world order will all be shuffled. However, hammers will be able to break locks, uh, allowing you to create shortcuts on the overworld map without having to play a specific fort to unlock it, and uh, end cards will be enabled. So the cards you match will give you a random item that can range in value from clouds to frog suits to music boxes, etc. And these card games, as you may recall from the vanilla version of the game, uh, spawn every time the player accumulates 80,000 points. Uh, once we reach the semifinals, we'll be switching over to a similar flag set, uh, but the only difference is that those end cards will be disabled altogether. So yeah, we'll be launching the event with a match between Dust Minion and Animus United. Um, Dust Minion is now a veteran SMB3 randomizer player at this point. In fact, I had the opportunity to face him in the first round of the Random Mania one-shot tournament that went down last year. But I can say from experience that he's a very talented runner. Animus United, however, just joined the community a few months ago, and he's made some really impressive progress since he began learning the ins and outs of the randomizer. And what is also in- also interesting to note is that uh, he's brought his average time down by a good 10 minutes just over the past uh, month or so. So he's been improving a lot. So uh, happening concurrently, we'll have Ibuba7 versus S Diesel. Uh, Ibuba is, of course, uh, not only an experienced SMB3 randomizer player, but also a long-time seasoned vanilla runner of the game as well, sporting an any percent warpless PB of 52.22. S Diesel is a very solid randomizer runner himself. As a matter of fact, he was one of the last men standing in the Speed Gaming Live tournament that went down in D.C. last October. So it'll be interesting to see what these four have in store for us. And thank you for that uh, very comprehensive intro for our uh, runners. So we're going to be getting ready to go here in just a moment, as soon as the gate is dropped. And we're going to have a real good race here. Yeah, get your guesses in. What are gonna, what's going to be the first world we're going to see out of the gates? Well, I'm going to say four. Go with three. And we have World 2. All right. All right, so what's going to be the, the first fort we're going to play? We're going to be starting off with 8F. So both of these, all of our runners are going to have a chance to just uh, start off with um, grabbing a power-up just right out of the gate. And it's going to be needed to break the blocks in order to get to the conveyor belt room. And it seems like we're starting off with an early death with Animus United. So uh, yeah, it's going to be a couple seconds behind, but uh, still very much within striking distance. Um, S Diesel, it's like he's uh, going for a star, which will uh, definitely be a good protection against some of the stuff that can come up in the P-Switch uh, room. Are these runners going to be able to get a one cycle in? It looks like um, nah, no, not such luck this time around. So they'll either have an opportunity just to go into the Boom Boom room with Small Mario and then just run under the spikes, or they could just take the opportunity to uh, grab a power-up along the way. It looks like Dustman is taking the opportunity to grab a mushroom. Might go back in for a second one. It looked like uh, Ibuba took uh, both power-ups, so we could just do a double damage boost under the spikes. And it looks like he's holding on to the tail altogether. 
So it'll definitely be good to have that secondary power up in case anything should happen in some of the subsequent levels later on. Mm -hmm. It looks like we have four. This is for, uh, you know, three, I believe. Four, three. So one of the things that, um, if, if, you know, considering that, you know, one of the spinies is always, almost always going to be one of the uh, opening enemies in this level, it's really hard to build P speed right away. So usually I like to pray that there's going to be a star power up in the um, on that one platform so they could just run the rest of the way through. But uh, yeah, there's no harm in having a, um, a mushroom there instead or a raccoon leaf, uh, in, like as in Dust Minion and Animus's case. So they're, yeah, since you're not going to have P-Speed uh, to just pretty much run all the way through, it's uh, there's actual, absolutely no harm in just uh, taking a little more, more carefully just to make sure they're not taking a death about 35 seconds into the level. As well, this level's not particularly long, it's still a little costly because you do have to take it a little bit cautiously. Alright, now next we have 5-7. Uh, Looks like um, Iboob has taken the moment just to grab the Fire Flower from the Wooden Blocks. Uh, others, like um, S Diesel, has taken uh, some time just to brave it out of Small Mario so he can just get to the exit a little bit sooner. So he'll be the first one out. Called closely by Dustme and, and Abuba. Um, yeah, we might see some divergence in um, in pads and some leads be exchanged, uh, you know, just around every once in a while, just because of um, some players like to skip some of the Hammer Bro fights. Um, some of them will try to, you know, see if they can get any good items along the way. I absolutely see no harm in uh, just doing a couple of the earlier fights in some of the opening worlds just so you can have an inventory built up before we have a chance to uh, complete any of the previous worlds. So, I'm going to note that Dust Minion has chosen most fortuitously here just because the Hand Sage is an item and it's, you know, shorter and less deadly than what uh, Enmus United is dealing with. As we saw on S Diesel's end, we um, we have the Fire Flower in the at the end of Hand Three. So the other Hand levels, if they come up at any point, will also have the same item. So um, yeah, the other Hands will also have Fire as well. Oh, up next we have Six Five. Looks like Dust Minion is um, already has a start uh, has a nice advantage just having the Raccoon Tail to start. So we want to build P Speed right away, and then you'll be able to get up top. One of the good things about randomizer is you almost never have to worry about the um, oh the my goodness <laughs> nippers up top. You also have to worry about you know fire snakes and nonsense like that because that can generate a ton of lag. I have never seen this level this on fire before. <laughs> right, that's one fire snake. That's the fire snake that dealt with. with. That's fire chump. Just get the peace feed and get up there. It. it it's kind of oh it's kind of, my goodness. It's pretty remarkable how much time you can lose by just being damaged multiple times and just having to run back to the leaf multiple times. So if you're gonna have to make any passes at the leaf, you just want to make that to be your only one. Booba taking an unfortunate death because he got swarmed by fire. But now that he knows what the level is, he'll be going in there with a P-Wing, so um, as long as he's uh, careful with his jump placement, he'll um, he'll lose a very minimal amount of time. Um, so yeah, he'll be able going... to build up some momentum right away and then just be able to get up top uh, as soon as possible. Just when you're going for the end card, doesn't look like he got anything. He's going to take this fight with these uh, fire rows, but should be fine. I don't know if it's just me, but I think these fire bros have some of the weirdest hitboxes out of all the ha all the the bros in the in the game. Because I don't think they were even designed to be on those upper platforms. Like, um, so whenever you try to bop them onto the blocks, um, sometimes it just doesn't affect the hitboxes at all. Yeah, you just need to do, like multiple bops. Yeah, I've noticed that with sledge bros too. Oh yeah, I agree. Sometimes they just take up. It's so weird, like, they'll be standing between two blocks, but you have to be really careful which one you choose, because sometimes it just doesn't affect them. We have a very soft and squishy Morton today. <laughs> Whip up and gone. Alright, so Dust Minion will be the first one out of World 1. Oh, and, oh, and um, S. Diesel's uh, not... Not that far behind. Actually, I think he's in the lead by a couple seconds, but they are t uh, two separate races.
And we have World 1 as our second world. Doesn't look oh, like, hey, um... But... There's, there's no hammers around, so they're gonna have to take the scenic route around, so... Uh, they'll be playing a couple levels before they get to reach the fort, and by that point, um, it's probably not even going to uh, matter if they break the lock or not, so... Uh, it's, it's probably the World 1 fort at this point. Yeah, I wouldn't <laughs> be surprised either. Gonna be playing the non-auto-scrolling version of uh, level 6-2. This is one of those levels file scroll removed that just stresses me out more than the original. It's one of the few levels that would actually be worthwhile to have a tail equipped so that you could just kind of flutter across once you get past the, the cloud sections and you could break some of those blocks to uh, not have to worry about platforming on the clouds. That looks like... is that... that's... that's 2-5, isn't it? Down there? That's 2-5. I thought so. Because, I'll be honest, for mostly, for me, for most of SMB3, a lot of the levels I just know as that level. <laughs> that's that's totally fair. But yeah, we see on S Diesel's side that he's playing 4-4, and interestingly enough, it's not, not a level that's really affected by a randomizer. The Lakitus are always going to be in their exact same spot. And similar to doing P-Speech strats in vanilla, um, Lakitu's movements and his spiny throws are dependent on your movement through the water. So as long as your inputs are consistent, then his um, his behavior will be consistent as well. But it's much easier said than done. Ooh, and Dustminion giving that Lakitu a concussion. <laughs> Love to see it. Look like... Uh... Animus was able to get the, the bop on Lakitu's head right in the beginning, so he's going to have to take the, the scenic way uh, underneath the wall. And we have 2-3 over here. All right, Blue was able to build some P-Speed. Will he be able to do the follow-up? He does. Very nicely done. Well, we see on uh, Dust Minion and, um, and S Diesel's side, they've been, they're playing 2-3. Uh, so since they're both small Mario, they had to be really, really careful because um, yeah, you never. It's kind of hard to react to what's above and below you, especially when you have seats where a boss bass is involved in the formula. And two three can be real nasty sometimes. And yep, unsurprisingly, this is World One Fourth. All right, so we'll see what's in the the second power up block. Is he going to get a leaf so they can get the item up top, or? Nope. No, there's no harm in getting a fire flower there. Um, didn't know if he was going to go for a clip or not, but with the dry bones right there, it'd probably be gonna, a bit of a waste of time. So I'm going to say, you know what? Just go through the, the, the spike room. Just get it over with. You can make that spike room look real good, so... One of the interesting things about that spike room is that if you have a game genie code that lets you go through walls, um, on the other side of the... Um, that spike wall, the, the spike ceiling, is where the uh, the magic whistle room is. We have more fire uh, bros today. Guarding the star. So Ibuba's making a really good pass at the end card game. We already have uh, two pairs down, so I'll be interested to see what ends up in his inventory. So that, depending on if he gets like any hammers or clouds, um, that could give him a pretty substantial lead at the, in the later parts of the, of the run. Gave him a hammer bro suit. Oh, very nice. Love to see that. Dust Minion also taking a pass at the uh, end card game. Oh, Ooh. a booba! It looked like he tried to go for the, the P Speed Strap, but uh, evidently there was a bit of a miscalculation in that jump there. That was a real good run at the end card from Dust Minion. Yeah, that'll definitely come in handy um, for much later on. A really That's good right. idea using that star on the fire bros. You even want to take chances even if you do have the fire equipped. S Diesel's our second person. Ooh! That clip though. S Diesel's our first person out of World 1. We'll see who he, where he's headed next. I gotta say, World 5 Airship is one of my favorite ones to uh, to do peace speech strats for in Randomizer. Ooh, is this even randomized? We have World 3 up next. Not a bad level layout either. Like, I mean, you had a pipe right away, which you love to see. You don't want to have to go navigating through a whole bunch of those levels just to get around the, the half circuit. 
and we have a real trick path to Wendy as well. At least we, um, at least we see what the the pathway to Wendy is. So hopefully, uh, Super Tank will be the one to unlock it, since uh, it didn't look like any of our players had a hammer in their inventory at the moment. Looks like everyone is headed out of World Two, or, well, World One to World Three now. All right, so we'll see on S Diesel's side if he was able to unlock Wendy or not. Fingers crossed. Yep, that's and just and one stage thing. and done. Love to see it. One and done. The World 7 airship is that you have uh, two opportunities to grab some power-ups. Ooh, and he just miscalculated the jump on that screw and just fell right through. But luckily, it was just right at the beginning, so it was no more than just a couple seconds. He's good. He's good. That's me, and taking this time to get himself some uh, Hammer Bro items. He knows where the star is. We'll see if he's able to get anything from that question mark block. Ooh. Oh, he's gonna forego it. Oh, and we see a ha see a hammer on Ibuba's side. Just thinking about it for a moment, and then deciding now he's gonna go play the fortress. But uh, Endless United not hesitating. Ibuba saw that there was two forts there, and he didn't want to take the gamble and see if uh, he was gonna pick the wrong one. So he decided, you know what? I'm just gonna use my hammer. Um. Probably doesn't know where he is, uh, just in terms of, you know, you know, exchanging leads, so we decide, you know, I'm not gonna take that chance. You know, I had a bit of a rough start in 6-5, I want to catch up uh, by however much I can at this point. Dustmanian being kind of rewarded. That is actually a good hammer to be able to save, because uh, we have World 6 still upcoming, we have World 7, World 5 can have a ha walking away. It looks like Ibuba and uh, Animus United had a little bit of a uh, rough time with Wendy. Like, they both tried to go for an aggressive fire kill there, but because of the way the platforms are set up in the World 7 airships uh, boss arena, um, yeah, Wendy just kind of walked right towards them while um, they were trying to get up close and aggressive, so... Um, By the way, speaking of a world where that hammer's gonna come in real handy so you don't have to go hunting for airships, I mean, or fortresses, we have World 7 up next. As Dustmian, Animus United, and they are all, you know, entering World 7. Yeah, see, seeing the way that Dry Bones just dropped down on S Diesel's head right now, that's one of the main reasons why I dislike 5F1 and Randomizer. Because the some of the enemy placements could just be so awkward, and with the way the road of this can reverse trajectory, it just makes some of the passages through those thwomp sections a little bit more uh, frustrating than they, you would otherwise prefer. My Thanks money to... is on Dustman and probably uses his hammer here. I mean, that's definitely an option, but um, since he's playing that level, he might just decide just to uh, play the fourth that's just right above him, because, um, you know, they still have yet to play World 6, and that hammer can definitely be used to break a rock where the pipe would normally be. And if it can get them right across the, the overworld map, he wanna, might want to use that instead, you know, just in that hypothetical situation. Yep. Oh no, we have 7 <laughs> 5 up next. Oh, you Mandatory hate to see 7 it. 5 of an angry son, I love it. Oh, you hate to see it. It's entertaining for us, the viewers, but for us players, I could definitely relate. You... I hate, I mean, I hate playing this type of this type of 7 5. Doesn't mean wants nothing to do for that lower path at the moment. It's trying to get a clip, and it's not su successful with it just yet. But one of the good things about having Angry Sun in 7-5 is that it doesn't activate until you get towards the end of the level, you know, where you normally see the exit pipe. So um, if they play their cards right, they might be able to grab one of the, the white and blue blocks that you can throw and then just get it right in the Angry Sun's head as it's swooping down. But you have to be really careful with your aim because its hitbox can be a little janky. 
So we'll see what uh, Dust Mini decides to do with that. Meanwhile, we have uh, S Diesel in the, the World 2 Ford and uh, Ibuba in the Hand 1. So he'll be able to pick up another Fire Flower there. Ooh, it looks like um, Ibuba got caught by the, the Chungus Quake. And just, yeah. Dust Minion grabbing the, the White Block. Does he get the Angry Sun? He does. Very nice. Now he could build the, the coin block bridge there, so instead of just going around, he's deciding, you know what, I'm just going to do a clip here instead. He's not getting much luck with these clips. Well, he just got like one or two attempts, and he's like, you know what, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to play it safe. And you know there's absolutely no harm in doing that either. And what's United about to pick up another Fire Flower is this diesel is about to find a mandatory 7-5. You'd love to see it. Speaking of love to see it, Dust Mini made it out there no problem at all. So we'll just see what he decides to do on the overworld map. Uh, as, we, I, as I believe you've noted, we do have the World 2 Fortress over here. What are your thoughts on it, anyway? Um, usually if I'm just Big Mario, by the time I get to the... By the time I get to the spike room, I'll try to do a damage boost on the overhead spikes just so I could. Uh, build a little bit of P speed to just to get to the door a little bit earlier, not, not have to wait for the extra cycle. But uh, one thing I appreciate uh, about the uh, Randomizer 2F over vanilla is that um, more often than less, you'll have the hot feet on the ground, which makes it a little bit easier to build P speed rather than just jumping over the dry bones. And that's when you gain paid back for using a hammer with another hammer. Keep the hammers rolling. I see Human Mustard asking if um, if anybody was uh, skipping end cards. I don't think I've any seen anyone do that yet. Um, I know at least three of the four runners I've seen play end cards were able to get multiple pairs through. And hello, Ludwig. Ludwig is just the worst in, in Randomizer because he always does those astronomically high jumps. And it just goes and right because through your his Yeah, for whatever, yeah. He's just like, hitbox is for thee, not for me. Making good use of his iframes too, uh, with the ricocheting shell, just to get through that lower passage. So Ibuba knows that the angry sun is going to be on the bottom, so he's going to grab the block, and is he able to take the sun out? Oh, he went right through the hitbox, the, the jank hitbox that I was telling you. Oh, you hate to see it. So, yeah, he's going to have to go through the safe way just to make sure he doesn't take a death. Because, yeah, the repercussions at this point for losing would um, would definitely set him back significantly. So, yeah, he's going to have to watch out for the Paragoomba. Then um, once he's past there, then he'll be in good shape. I tell you, Paragoombas are my least favorite enemy thanks to Randomizer. <laughs> Paragoombas are the enemy of the people. I don't blame you. I, I have lost count of how many times I've got kicked in the teeth by one. Oh yeah, it happens to me all the time. It happens to everybody. We have one six here. I know you know you, I, I know in vanilla this level looks real impressive, but you can't quite replicate it in uh, randomizer. Yeah, more often than less, you're gonna get an enemy um, in the sky that you just can't bounce. Um, you just can't bounce bounce off their head and do peace speed strats. Um, so, I, I mean, every once in a while you can, but why take the risk and then just end up falling to your death because you got a fire snake instead of a Koopa? I wonder if Dustman is going to play this fortress. United made really good work of the direct of the the Tanuki tail, uh, getting past the angry sun and just bypassing the the block bridge altogether. Yep. Okay. Looks like everyone. It looks like Booba is now entering World Six. Oh. That's when it is just going for these hammer bros. Honestly, the extra items you get from them are real nice. 
I mean, if I was in Dust Minion's situation, then I would probably be bypassing a lot of the Hammer Bros uh, now that we're more than halfway through the um, through the seed now. And he's got a pretty good haul from his end card game. So um, I think he should be in pretty good shape as far as uh, routing is concerned and, you know, just having the some good resources for um, by the time he gets to World uh, 7 and 8. Ew, that was a little... Uh, that was a little sketch there, but he got through. Yeah, 4F1 is pretty scary, both in vanilla and randomizer, because you have that really tight clutch jump um, that's just, you know, that one tile passage through. But what did he just get? I oh. missed it. Well, and those United got that good high jump from Ludwig. You know, high jumps, he... I'm surprised he went and jumped for that one, because that cost you a couple extra seconds as well, because of the... Um... Yeah, the one falls faster than Mario drops down during the cutscene. Pop, pop. One of the neat perks about uh, the 1 6 beta level is that when the Fire Snake is jumping up um, during that already high elevated platform, uh, you can just kind of go right through it as you're jumping over him. That's me and just gain out of that egg card as fast as possible. Oh, we have uh, world. We have the Fortress of Solitude, which I was real excited for, <laughs> for uh, Diesel coming in with that uh, Tanuki suit, and then he got like a uh, Dry Bones to the noggin. All right, that's Diesel making really good work with the, the P-Speed uh, just to get to the to that pass. So he was able to skip that one section where the horizontal moving swamp is. Picked up a Fire Flower along the way, so he's going to be really careful just to not take damage from that road of discs. He gets through there. And it looks like we have the 1-6 beta over there. Oh, oh my goodness! I missed this Fortress layout. This is great. I love it. I would say that for the 1-6 betas, as soon as you take that one hit from one of the enemies, just take advantage of your iframes as much as you can and just start running. Just get out of there. Because at least you'll have a, just barely enough time to build peace speed towards the end. And the fortress at the start of the world is also required. <laughs> what a good, what a good world six. All right, Dustman, you make, making it out of world six, no problem. It looks like we're at the world one airship. This is World 1 Airship, so you'll be uh, or, facing or, or, Lemmy. Yeah. I'm not sure why I say World 6. I think it was because we're in World 6. It doesn't matter. Hi! And, yeah, this is actually pretty uh, easy. This, you have Fire Flower. He's kind of stuck to the floor. One of the good things about Lemmy on lower elevated ground is that the ball goes through the through the floor, so that means that the hitbox is more vulnerable to the, um, the way the trajectory of the, fire, uh, the fireballs go. So it's just very easy to just get up in his face and just start spamming. And we're going to see what our next to last world is. We only have five or four left. We have world four. We have world four up next. Since he has the fort right there, uh, you might as well play it because that um, he's... Oh, you're pretty much always going to be required to build a bridge to get to the castle. The fact so we'll that see. He, I don't think I've ever seen a World 4 recently that has the bridge already like pre-built for you. I don't even think that's a thing. All the seeds I've done, I don't even recall having to, um, you know, just being able to go across the bridge just right off the bat. Abuba now finishing playing all the fortresses in World 6 here. He just almost dodged that um, that hot foot there, so yeah, he's gonna have to be a little bit more careful around that flump. It's still a little bit faster than going through the pipe and playing it safe, so uh, definitely a good move on his part. They have a nice power up there. He'll be happy to see he can get a star kill on Boom Boom. That's my right. movie to play that fortress up on 6F1, so we'll see if he's going to go for a full damage boost on the spike bed, or if he's just going to meet up halfway and then just, yep. So it looks like he wants to remain big Mario so he can try and clip that wall there. Or maybe not. 
Yeah, good. I, mean, I know that's also often a common practice with other players as well. We shouldn't get ahead of myself there. I get uh, I I get a little trepidatious just because of how the road of this work. <laughs> About I don't, doing that full uh I don't blame you. Oh, looks like he wanted to hold on to that P-Wing so that he can get an off-screen one grab, but uh, just barely, um, just barely missed the ball at that one point. And Abuba is now headed out of World, uh, world 6 into World 4, as, uh, looks like, uh, I do believe, uh, S Diesel is already in World 4 here. Speaking of World 4, is this World... This is World 4-1. Is Diesel gain that Force 10 card? You kind of hate to see it. Oh, uh, yeah. By the time you're in World 6 and you're like in the latter half of the game and you already have a pretty substantial uh, inventory, um, yeah, you want to avoid getting the end card as much as you can because at that point there's not really going to be many um, like clouds or hammers that can really do you any favors. And we have normal tanks. Honestly, normal tanks are probably scarier than super tanks. Oh yeah, for sure. At least with the super tank, uh, you don't really have to worry about anything in your way except for a couple rocky wrenches and if you have a firefly we could just snipe them out and just start building p-speed right away and as long as you're jumping in the right places you can just get a, a nice quick shortcut to the the pipe but the um, the way the tanks are kind of dispersed throughout this level um you really have to um watch out for the way some of the cannons uh shoot especially if you're accidentally rubbing against some of the walls and some of the cannons two clouds here at, right at the end of world uh four though is Dustman is our first one in the airship, and it's a World 6 one. Looks like he tried to go for the clip. He, if he was able to get it, I think he would save anywhere from like 4 to 7 seconds, I, recall, I um, don't recall which, which specifically. And it doesn't really cost you anything to go for it, so... Exactly. I mean, you're going to be doing a turn back, um, you know, anyway, just to avoid... He's out of here. Which means up next is World 5 for Desminion. Right, hopefully we can get um, a nice shortcut to, um, with either a tower or a pipe that'll just bring them straight to the to the castle. Cause it's definitely a thing that can happen pretty often. And I mean, we have all those uh, hammers. Oh yeah, that's a good point as well. The only thing that would really stop you from um, advancing to the castle is just a, a blue lock. So, unless you have to uh, build a bridge right in the beginning, which it doesn't look like he does, um, yeah, you should have a nice clear path. Shards of the Fortress. And... Right, this isn't too bad. It's definitely faster to play the, the fortress than go through the tower to get to that pipe around it. Uh, oh, <laughs> a little tripped up by the, the hammer bros there. I think at this point, yeah, it would be a good opportunity to start burning through some stars, some stars if you don't already have a music box. But I'm sure he'll gladly take that cloud. Love to see it. The cloud is always, you know, real nice to see. And as we saw on Dust Minions End, uh, he'll at least have a couple opportunities to use it in World 5. And th that was another cloud. Both those hammer bros had clouds. You know what else has a cloud? This, uh, this airship. Uh, yeah. Dust Minion trying to show us peace feed in uh, the World 4 airship. 
Animus United made a good choice to use the P-Wing the, at the start of the World 1 airship since he was just able to go over the overhead and just avoid all the cannons altogether. But it's going to have to be a little bit safe now because he got sniped by some of the uh, Lemmy's balls. Oh, no. Yeah, it oh. looks like... One of the things to note about um, the Koopalings is when you're jumping on their shells when they're in that, you know, that spinning shell state, it's, uh, I think there's a bit of RNG involved if it kicks you over from the, to the left or to the right. And, sometimes, SD... and with the speed you're going, it's very hard to avoid projectiles. And F. Diesel and Abuba entering World 5 at about the same time as Dustman is going to be our first player in World 8. Dustman has just been crushing at this seed, especially considering how um, he had a couple awkward situations that uh, kind of prolonged the duration of the run. You know, stuff like 7 5. So we'll see. Um, this first tank ends up being a fortress, so definitely a good sign. Because you know you'll have to at least play one of these fortresses on, uh, before you get to Bowser's Castle, more, more often than less. Sometimes you play all four. You hope to avoid that. Uh, you try to avoid it, but um, you know, hindsight is always twenty twenty because I always end up playing... Because the one that I end up meeting always ends up being the last one anyway. Thanos United is now entering World uh, 4. Ububa is on the airship and is about to hit World 8. As soon as he gets past Roy, that star is not going to help. It'll at least avoid, um, at least prevent him from taking damage when, um, you know, Roy is just, just stomping about. The World, World 5-2, uh, Fortress, some people make this look real good, I don't. Uh... <laughs> One of the things I love about uh, 5F2 is that you can do the peace speech strats uh, pretty much identical to vanilla. And alternatively, if you if you know in advance that that's the level you're going to get, you can uh, mentally prepare to try and go for a Jesus clip. Uh, that is to clip in the wall in the first lava room, and then it'll take you straight to Boom Boom's room and save you about three and a half seconds. But I don't blame anyone for not going for it, in a, especially in a randomizer race. Ooh, S Diesel getting bonked by Roy. Animus United also getting the unfortunate end card. That's me in checking this pipe. He does not have a bridge. But he knows where all the fortresses, remaining fortresses are. Oh, and he got the the bad news that he has to play Fort Knox, so he's gonna get an intentional death there rather than go through the the whole P switch ordeal to get a Tanuki suit because he probably knows he has a leaf or a piece uh, a P wing in his inventory, so we might as well just use it. Yep, see the P wing, just go straight to Boom Boom. S Diesel is now entering World Eight. This Animus United is playing this fortress safe, as he only had like the one power up. Uh, just a quick pass, just to see if there was any stars that he can get a quick kill on Boom Boom with. All right, it was this. Yeah, it's, this three, you... it's this the fortress. It's this the magic fortress. It is. And he has his hammer suit, and he's ready to go. Dustman is our first person in Bowser's castle. Right, we'll see how he decides to route this castle. It doesn't look like he's going to go for the basement clip, but uh, is he able to get the, that one? No. Yeah, normally you wouldn't do that upper clip uh, at the top of the elevator in vanilla because it doesn't really do you any favors, but it actually would save you time, especially if you're going to be careful on the stairs with these roto discs. Clip, no problem. Well, so will he... Um... Will he brave out the, the fireball room in the statue room? Or is he going to go for the clip? And he gets it first try. Oh my goodness. He's in there. All right, so he's just 20 seconds away from fighting Bowser. Honestly, in random, random these days, this is 
probably the safer way of getting the Bowser. The Bowser? I, know it. I Bowser. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, your GG's out for Dust Minion. As soon as he goes through that door, he is finished. Uh, and Dust Minion finishes up with an official SRL time of 36.26. GG's Dust Minion, that was quite the race from him. Indeed. And so it looks like Ibubu will be the next one to finish up, and he gets the, the People's Clip as well. And he has his Hammer Suit equipped, so it'll be a nice quick Bowser kill. S Diesel not get, quite getting the uh, distance he needed to get to the pipe. I believe Animus United is three Swiss stumps away from exiting World uh, Four. Yep, and there he is on the World Five. I forgot, does Animus United still have his uh, clouds in his inventory so he could skip a couple levels and get a nice quick shortcut to the to the castle? Or to I, think he I think he should. Okay. Yeah, he's um he's making some pretty good time as well. Uh, meanwhile, S. Diesel is uh, making his way over to uh, Bowser's castle. Doesn't have a hammer suit or a fire flower equipped, so he's going to do the next best thing. Uh, take a star for safety across the statues. And then he'll probably uh, try to... Try to do some flight strats to make it up the stairs a little bit quicker, and you'll probably want to see what he can get from the, the item box uh, before he goes uh, clipping through any walls or taking any other uh, alternative routes. So first he's going to get the one-up clip. Being finicky, there you go. You're going to see if he can get a fire flower here. Uh, unfortunately, it's a star instead, so it's not really going to help him out. But it's still going for that clip. I honestly can't blame anyone for going for that clip, um, you know, regardless of what their power-up status is, because um, uh, quite a bit of time just to even get to the um, to this part of Bowser's castle anyway. So there's no harm in just uh, doing a, a safer alternative. Um, Animus United, uh, just braving it out through the cheap cheeps in 4-2. Still maintaining his, uh, his raccoon tail. Decided, um, you know what, I had enough of this clip. Um, I don't even care anymore. I'm just going to, uh, I'm not going to let these, uh, fireballs, uh, boss me around. So, um, he's going to, um, now we're in the Bowser's fight. He's going to take advantage of the fact that Bowser doesn't have a hitbox on his lower half of his sprite, but he gets double jabated by both the jump and the fireball. You hate to see it. And, oh, yeah. Hamas United entering his final airship, the World 4 airship, off to face off with Roy. Is S. Diesel once more climbs the Rodoniska stairway. Um, anyone who's watching, do be sure to follow all four of our feature, our runners here. And remember, we have more people racing over on Randomania too. Diesel's following him up with the second pass at Bowser's Castle, so he's, we're in the statue room. He's going to be a little bit more careful here. Uh, every time he crosses over those donuts, just want to make sure that the coast is clear. Really nicely done. So now that, now that he's in the ground, um, yeah, all he has to do is just uh, wait around for another 40 seconds. And uh, Bowser will be down and out. 
Meanwhile, uh, we see uh, Animus is uh, just taking a moment to finish up Roy. Looks like he was getting a little bit caught up in some of those quake jumps. But he'll be on his way over to World 8. From this, uh, from this World 8, it seemed like a pretty linear path. It didn't really have to go through uh, too much back and forth with the pipes, uh, which is always a good thing. It looks like uh, looks like S Diesel got clipped by a fireball. Oh no! If if you stand too far to the right or to the left of Bowser, even when you're directly underneath him, sometimes um, you can get just nicked in the corner of that fireball's hitbox. Animus United now entering World Eight. Gets a hammer. I think the hammer's kind of useless <laughs> at this point. Oh, S Diesel. that he has uh, one more bridge that he has to, to clean up before he gets to Bowser's castle. And he's actually not too far away from it. All right, so he sees that he's in Fort Knox. Does he know uh, if he has um, a power-up that'll allow him to fly to the top, or is he going to go through the, the Tanuki suit ordeal? I think he's looking to go through the Tanuki suit ordeal. Let's see. That definitely seems to be the case. So, yeah, he's going to be making his way over to... Um, to the block room again. Just watch your bad blood breath with these fireballs. Oh! Oh no. Need to see it. At this point, I almost considered taking the lower route. <laughs> Just because the fireballs down there might be slightly less uh, hazardous. Could be, but it's not a guarantee. But at least, at the very least, you'll be able to pick up a, a second power-up block. You don't know if Which, it's going to be a star or a mushroom or a, a leaf, but uh, I'd say at this point it's definitely worth at least checking it out. MS United is flying up to Boom Boom. Gonna do another pass at the uh, Bowser's Castle. See if they, he opened up that bridge. He yeah, did. I, so he's on his way. You know, I will note that from like the earlier versions of Rando, taking the upper route is kind of a. Uh... Oh no! One of the fireballs despawned, but his hitbox was still active. So you it, saw that he's put like... that death in midair. It's just kind. Of, yeah, it's unfortunate. Also, I will note, taking the upper route for, uh, like, random runners is kind of, is kind of like a, uh, it, it's just something we're so used to, we just kind of don't remember that there's a lower route at times. Yeah, for sure. I see a lot more runners uh, taking advantage of that lower route just because they don't want to deal with the, the fireballs up top. Particularly since you're on unstable ground uh, in the upper route. Yeah, for sure. Alright, so I'll be saying hello to Bowser. So, play, is he going to play nice this time? It looks like he is. He's still within striking distance of that fireball, but still just barely able to, to miss it. Alright, so he's just one jump away from finishing things off. Be careful with those fireballs. Animus United oh, no. is past Bowser. You know, it's one thing I've never noticed with the um, with the fireballs in the statue room. Um, even if you even if you encounter certain patterns, um, and then you try to go back to try and avoid them, it just resets the cycle all over again. So you'll get the same set of fireballs on your your second pass around in that room. Is just finished up, so get your GGs out for him. Finished up with an official SRL time of 4529. <laughs> and looks 
like S Diesel will not be far behind. He did it! The son of a bitch did it! Done, and S Diesel finishes up with an official SRL time of 4616. Yeah, this has been um this has been a really fun way to to start up the the tournament and really excellent performance from all four of our racers. So do be sure to give them all a follow. All right, do you want to see if we can get the uh, NMS and or S Diesel in? Oh yeah, sure. Oh, Okay. S Diesel will not be joining us. Not sure if Animus United will be. Okay, fair enough. With um with those two races um down and out. It looks like um, Dustman will be moving on to the, the second round of the tournament, so he'll be facing the winner of Glutamic Acid versus Johnny Link, and Ibubo will be advancing to round two, and he'll be facing the winner of Europsilus versus Claris.com. So yeah, we'll be uh, we'll be having uh, we'll be proceeding with the, the next rounds of the tournament uh, just in a few minutes. Uh, we'll have some more uh, Group Two flag sets uh, going on. I have reports in from the other race. Yopi GS has defeated Midi Guy. And, uh, someone by the name of Paradox has defeated Value Kai the Dreamer. Whoever that is. Do you know who that is? Uh, I don't recognize the name, but uh, I, I would imagine he's um, a fairly uh, new competitor in the uh, SMB3 randomizer community. advancing he'll be moving on to face the winner of human mustard versus leslie pro yobi gs will be uh advancing to round two and he'll be facing the winner of growl versus myself all right and we're joined by animus united ggs sorry you uh, had to go out now Hey, no, no, no problem. Uh, glad to have participated in it. Had a little rough time, I think, in like World Six, I believe, was what was struggling with me. Had some unnecessary deaths, but uh, really enjoyed World Eight. Really enjoyed the finish, strong. So, uh, I got a and I miss it was a really solid performance on your part. It looks like you made some really good usage of uh, some of your inventory items, uh, especially with the the P wing and the um, the World One airship. And you know, just uh, navigating through the the trenches of six five. So, um, did you have any um, any thoughts yourself? Oh uh, yeah, I mean, really, I think going forward here, the thing I want to learn from this is you know avoiding a lot of unnecessary deaths because that was kind of what was getting me there. But uh, other than that, yeah, I mean, I was pretty happy for the most part of what I was able to do there. So. Oh yeah, without a doubt. And you're a, you're a relatively new runner in the SME3 randomizer community, if I'm not mistaken. And I think I remember Growwolf mentioning to me um, not too long ago that he really brought your average 
um, your average seed time's down by a, a good like up to 10 minutes, if I'm not mistaken. So I really hope you keep at it. I'm you know, uh, really hoping to see more out of you uh, moving forward. So congratulations oh, yeah. again. It was a really awesome performance on your part. Yeah, thank thank all of y'all. I appreciate you know putting this tournament together. Really, really awesome experience here. Yeah, I'm, I am relatively new. I think I joined like a month ago, late late May, early June, around there. So yeah, yeah fantastic. But, yeah, yeah, it's been very fun getting to learn this. No doubt. <laughs> It's just an endless possibility of the, the way that the enemy arrangements can be uh, can change from level to level and just a lot of things that you really got to watch out for and stuff. A lot of stuff that you take for granted in some of those um, vanilla speed runs just doesn't translate well to uh, randomizer. So I just got to learn when to take it safe or just make modifications that'll play it to at least go moderately fast, if not uh, optimal in certain situations. Oh, oh yeah, absolutely. And as I like to tell Grey Wolf, I mean, I like to call this kind of like a board game because like every time you play, it's like you get a different experience. So that's kind of what attracts me to this. And that's why I love playing the randomizer a lot. Yeah, very well said. So, um, yeah, with that, um, Starman, do we have a, an idea of what the, the next rounds are going to be for the for the tournament? Yep. Takes. I have to kick you out of the I have to kick you out of the broadcasting booth because you need to go join an SRL room. All right, sounds good. And I'll um, see you on the other side. So, um, it, for everyone's enjoying the event all, so far. I wish all of you all the best. Thank you all for the interview. Oh yeah, man. Likewise. Uh, Thank you. Pleasure. All right. Have a good one. Take care. Hey, you too. All right, everyone, we're going to be taking a short break, and we'll be back with you in just a moment with more SMB3R.